Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Confessions of a Virtual Boss. As always, your host and virtual boss, Michael Brody. Great to have you with me today. There's a lot of shows out there, as you know, that teach you how to build a business, and there's a lot of good ones. There's also a lot of crap. So I do appreciate you deciding to listen to Confessions of a Virtual Boss. I do appreciate you tuning in to my show. Got a great show lined up for you today. It's going to be a real short one. A bit like a 100 meter sprint. It's going to be packed of action, juicy tips, and things you can really think about and apply to your life and to your business today. Okay, so how copying with a tweak will grow your business faster than anything else? Controversial statement, right? Especially when there's a lot of people telling you about originality, which, don't get me wrong, originality is good, but copying can be good on steroids. Observing a good idea or a business that works and then bringing your own variation is what a lot of the the biggest, most successful companies in the world have done. And it's absolutely a way to be successful. Here's the thing, okay? If no one has, has ever done what you propose, there's a real good chance the market doesn't exist. Just look at many of the ideas on... You know, TV shows, if you're in the UK, you know, Dragon's Den, or in America, you've got Shark Tank. Just look at some of the ideas on there, okay? Some of them are are crazy. Um, And they're new, innovative ideas. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, there always has to be one innovator. For example, if Henry Ford, let's remember Henry Ford, if he'd listened to his target market before inventing the Ford car company, his customers would have probably asked him for a faster horse. <laughs> That's what they would have wanted, right? That's what the market wanted. We don't want cars, we want a quicker horse. You put a bit of mustard up its ass. Same with Jack Ma. When he created Alibaba, he innovated and went against the grain. But even Jack Ma, I'm not sure, was he original? Or did he get the idea from somewhere like America? what was already working in the US, in the West. I don't know, but most of our thoughts come from somewhere, and it's usually from observance and incubation, using our eyes and ears. Apple, okay, let's take Apple, for example. Apple revolutionized the world with the iPod. Did they? Or did they simply bring out a better, more practical, sexier looking, version of the Walkman or the MP3 player with super, you know, absolutely super marketing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the marketing which Apple did and has done is tremendous. Some of the best marketing I've ever seen in the consumer sector. And how about those? Weren't the Walkman and MP3 just more practical versions of something like a Gecko Blaster or a big stereo player from the 80s? Walmart, Sam Walton, One of the greatest entrepreneurs in American history, in my opinion. Certainly financially he was. He started with one shop, one store, and he blew it up to become the richest man in the world. What was Walmart's model? They sell variety stores. And Sam decided to sell the same goods at a big discount and created what we now call the discount retail model. And even that, you've got to remember, people forget this, Kmart existed before Walmart. You know, it was already working in different parts of America. Um, so maybe he observed that and just decided to do a better version. Who else? How about all of us who are producing podcasts, me included? One guy first did it. He said, these podcasts are pretty damn good. I'm going to go with one of these. Then everyone listened to theirs and decided they could do their own. We listened to, you know, everybody in every market is some kind of... Uh, Everybody who proclaims to be unique often isn't. 99.9% of people aren't unique or businesses aren't unique. They might well have a variation, but it's a variation from a model that already works. So can you semi-replicate, tweak and be successful? A resounding yes. Don't get me wrong. Outright copying, I'm not encouraging here because you'll end up with an inferior version of the original. However, Here's the formula I used when I launched the retail chain as a teenager. I'm going to give you and tell you exactly what I've done because this is just based on my experience. So I can, you know, I can tell you all this because I've done it. 
I observed a Christmas shop formula back when I was 17, where stores were open in September or January on flexible leases, flexible rental terms. So they would, they would get the best season for the toys and gifts, which was November and December. January to June was treading water. You were covering your costs and making a you know a small amount of money. It wasn't you were making anything serious. But they made hundreds of thousands per store over the winter period. And then they closed the doors. So I'm some kid. I'm a 17-year-old kid. Okay? Just left school at 16. Didn't didn't go to college, didn't go to university. And I had accumulated about twenty thousand pounds. At the time about thirty thousand dollars, twenty five thirty thousand, something like that. And which I got from wheeling and dealing as a 15 and 16 year old down the markets, at auctions, online, doing whatever it took. I really hustled and you know did all the bits and bobs. And I went in as a 17 year old. This is just me, okay? Me and a business partner who was also 17. So two kids go in, you know, with the, the managers of the shopping centers and the operations managers and all these kind of positions, these corporate positions. And we, we negotiated a deal where we, we were paying 25% of the asking rent. I then used leverage, and I remember this seat guy, Harps, that's what he was called. I was trying to think what he was called there. This had gone back seven years. He was an importer, had a distribution company, and he, he took a shine to my passion, and he, he gave us a load of stock on credit. We took it, we sold it, we paid him, and my passion got me that. I made a killing, did well, and built up the business, as you know. The point I make here is I observed what someone else was doing. Someone else was already doing the same formula we did, a company in Birmingham, and they had over 50 stores a year, making a lot of money. I'm talking a lot of money, very, very millions, millions of pounds, a lot of money. And we create an opportunity based on, on the formula they had already tried and tested. We noticed they'd done it for two or three years. Obviously, it was working. As a virtual boss right now, I'm in a... I, I'm in like a totally unique position and something I, I, I'm really grateful. I love, you know, I really love life. You know that. And I love business and I love everything. And I love being the virtual boss. I'm in this unique position in terms of being in a market as a personal brand. I'm known for being the expert when it comes to outsourcing. In particular, the expert when it comes to hiring Filipino virtual employees and, and outsourcing the Philippines. But look at my business now. Take, for example, www.virtualstaff.ph, my company. It's original, it's unique, and it brings tremendous value to entrepreneurs. You know that. As, as most of my listeners, I know when you tweet me and when you, you send me messages, I know most of you have already used the platform. You say things like Mike, um, you know, enjoyed it, anything else you can, you know, advise. or And, you know, I, I don't mind doing that. I really don't. I don't mind giving you know, um, answering any questions or helping you in any way I can, even if it's, you know, I'm not all, it's not always monetary. It's about giving value because I know the more value I give, the more value we give as a company, it, it, it really does return tenfold. I'm telling you that because I've tried this and it, it, it does, it really does. But here's the thing. Was my idea original? Let's find out. Yes. It was original in the respect of the model which we created, but outsourcing is not original, you know that. I observed what works. I saw things like Upwork that were doing a freelance model, and I simply made virtualstaff.ph unique, specialized. We focus only on helping you hire Filipino remote staff. We also encourage you to hire full-time, not freelancers. The model is similar in terms of you know outsourcing and the, the goal for the entrepreneur is the same. But we, we changed the dynamics of the model to something that works better for us, worked better for me, and I believed it worked better for other entrepreneurs. Because business is not a temporary thing. It's a permanent thing. It's a permanent solution. Many entrepreneurs need. So we provide, we provide the need. We, we provide the solution to the problem. We then went like crazy. We went steps further. We changed the whole industry by turning it on its head. We don't charge recruitment fees. We don't charge monthly management fees. We don't take a percentage of the worker's salary. People thought I was crazy when I said we'd do this. I said we're going to do this and we're going to 
bloody good at it. We're gonna we're gonna create something that's gonna be tremendous. It's gonna be global. It's gonna be, you know, to to the next level. But my main focus was on value. How can we add it? How can we strip away unnecessary costs and pass them on to the customer? Sounds simple. It is. So how do you copy and build a business? That's the question you're asking. Okay, Michael, great. Love the stories. Love the trip down memory lane. But how do you copy and build a business? Okay, well, here. Here's the thing. First thing is use your eyes and ears. Observe and see in life every day ways you can add value. How can you make something easier? How can you make it more cost efficient? How can you enhance the user experience? How can you give more value? Every restaurant you ever go in, every restaurant I go in, well, 99.9% of them are copied. I mean, maybe the founder was somewhere at the other end of the world and they, they, they had this light bulb moment and they saw the idea. Does it mean, or it doesn't mean, they're not making fortunes, some are making tremendous money. So focus how you can add value. And don't listen to people telling you that you should never copy. Now, I don't mean ripping someone off or something or infringing trademarks or copyrights. I'm not telling you to do that. And if you think I am, then, you know, obviously common sense isn't so common. But I'm saying observe what's working, adapt it, add value, go make yourself money, go make yourself a business. You know, don't listen to all these stupid personal brand digital marketers who try and sell you these you know the courses where you know just really don't okay so real blunt show again as always you know i'm always blunt i think you've uh, i'm like mama you love me or you hate me but one thing i will say is i say all this honestly i have no ulterior motivation here so i can be blunt i'm not trying to use some nlp tactic or i'm not trying to lead you down uh, you know, some kind of path that's going to charge you thousands on a course. It's, you know, a Uber and all this kind of... I don't do that. So, like I say, real blunt, I managed not to blabber on too long, I hope. I haven't checked the time of the podcast yet. <laughs> hope it's added value. You know I speak based on all my experience and the experience of others. I practice what I preach, and I really, really, really appreciate you listening to the show. Remember, follow me on Twitter, at The Virtual Boss. And again, check out www.michaelbrody, that's B-R-O-D-I-E, dot net, which is my personal site that is created to help you grow your business by outsourcing and using common sense in an era that is lacking it. Thanks for listening to Confessions of a Virtual Boss. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.